So good morning from outside of Mount Hood in Oregon. I am on day one of my trek to Maine. And uh, today is about 190 miles. I'm going to be going to almost a farm in Cove, Oregon. So I had said before, uh, we are not good at boondocking. We've only done it a few times. Uh, yesterday I ran my generator uh, until well, just for a couple hours really to charge somewhat the trailer battery but I needed to charge up my computer and a couple other things and then I unhooked it and this morning when I got up it was 40 degrees outside so pretty cold uh, the shower was hot the water was but everything else is freezing kind of felt like I was going to get <laughs> hypothermia but uh, anyway when I went to close the slide outs my battery gave a low charge error and uh, so that's going to be something I need to, to watch out for we've had the battery for a year and a half and I don't know, maybe uh, maybe it's getting close. So I did. I had put my generator away last night. So today, tonight, I'm just going to leave it out, connected, so I can get up in the morning, turn it on, and give the batteries a a little boost. But for now, I am hitting the trail. So I'm about 15, 20 minutes outside of uh, my first harvest hose stop at Almost a Farm in Cove, Oregon. So Cove, Oregon is about 15 minutes outside of La Grande, Oregon, which if you're an RV or a travel trailer owner, you might know because a lot of RVs and travel trailers are made here in La Grande, Oregon. But anyway, so heading up here and uh, I am super, super excited because I called earlier to check just to make sure, hey, you still got a spot? And they offered me a very, very cool opportunity that you're gonna get to see here. As a, maybe it's a once in a lifetime for me, I don't know. But I have been excited for the last 187 miles. So, stay tuned. So when you're on the Harvest Host website and you go to each location, one of the, the main things that they tell you is the size of vehicle. So it'll normally tell you like less than 45 feet. Well, I thought I was doing a really good job looking at it, but when I <laughs> looked up almost a, a, a farm, I think maybe I got too excited, I totally failed to look at that. So their actual maximum length is supposed to be 25 feet or less, uh, and normally they would park them right along here so you've got a great place to pull up back in you've got this perfect spot unfortunately um, when janet uh the owner and i started talking she said hey how, how big is your rig and i was like well, it's with the trailer i'm about 60 feet so they decided to make an exception for me and thankfully they did so i actually have this great spot right in front of the barn I think one thing I've always aspired to in life is to meet somebody famous like Jack Daniels. And I have finally met Jack Daniels. Meet Jack Daniels. Hi, Jack. How's life? Yeah? You got a lot to say, huh? What? So at the farm here, they've got, obviously, they've got a pig 
They've got Nigerian dwarf goats. And uh, inside the barn here, they've got kind of a little sampler of things that they offer. So they make beeswax candles, goat milk soap, hand sanitizer, and then lots and lots of different types of jams and jellies. They do eggs, which for the breakfast starter kit, it's $10. You get, let me make sure I got this right, half a dozen eggs, four ounces of jelly or jam of your choice, and then you either get a whole mini, whole mini loaf or four buttermilk biscuits, which I, I ordered. So I should be getting those today. So tomorrow I'm gonna have a really, really good breakfast. But I'm gonna walk around the farm, check some things out, and then tonight, it's about five o'clock. I'm gonna have some fun. Bye, Jack. So I found the chickens, and apparently they are used to people coming over because they think, think I'm gonna feed them. Hello! I have no food for you. I will be trying some of your delicious eggs in the morning though and I really appreciate it. So when you come out here obviously they, they tell you you walk around the land, see some different things. But look at the view they have. Their house is behind me and that's what they get to see. It's the type of view you can just sit on your porch all day and accomplish nothing, just watching. So with soap, beeswax, candles, um, jellies, jams, eggs, and a whole host of other goods, uh, they also make bread here. So this is, I got a wheat, a loaf of wheat bread, and it's not like a, a loaf of bread like you think. This is like cool old world style. Look at this. I mean, that's a, that's a loaf of bread, man. That's a normal size paper plate underneath it. Uh, so I think, um, I think this is $5 and um, I'm gonna try it here in a bit. It smells delicious though. Okay, so earlier I said that there was gonna be a surprise they're, they're going to let me milk a goat. This, this is Penny. Penny. And she's our herd matriarch. So Do you want me to feed Jack? Sure, if you want to. She is eight years old. And we have <laughs> one of her daughters. Okay. One of her granddaughters and one of her great-granddaughters in our herd. Very cool. So she was bred by a woman named Nicole Lopper. So the Lopper is, um, is a herd name that's common. Uh, and recognized as a tip milk producer. All right, so we just use this simple pulse milking machine to start all the goats off with. And then, so that kind of does the bulk of the work for us. Okay. And we're not a grade A dairy, but we use the grade A dairy standards. And so the hygiene that we use to clean the equipment and to clean the goat meets their standards. We've had the Oregon Department of Agriculture out here talking to us oh. about those standards. Uh -huh. If they, um, aren't milked at all. Probably three or four weeks they stop all milk production. What we do is when we're ready to dry them out is we start and just give them, we, give them, uh, we milk them once a day instead of twice a day for several weeks. And then, and then we start milking once every other day. And so we take about a month to dry them out. If you dry them out too fast or just stop milking them, then the udder gets congested and then that just becomes a mess. Okay. Okay, want to get hand milk now? You can stop. You can get the milk. All right, so if you want to just wash your hands in the sink behind you, the hot water is super hot, so make sure and run some cold with it. When you milk, what you're going to do is just imagine that this is her udder, this is her teat right here, okay. and you're just going to take your hand like this, and okay. just squeeze it and pull down gently, squeeze it and pull down gently. So I'm going to show you the first stroke, and then you can. Okay. So you're just going to make sure that her first drop. Okay. And then you're just going to take a hold of it and just squeeze your fingers. You just, you want to do that side? Sure. And, um, 
And so as a result of that, then we started the milk testing late. So we just started last month. All right, so how do you, whoa, whoa, you whoa. just put your foot in the milk. Okay, that's not gonna be milk we're gonna use. So let's. Sorry. It's okay, there we go. All right, it. so. So if you just wanna hold this up and then you just wanna, she doesn't like it you to touch her foot. Okay. So my hand's up on the udder. Uh-huh, and then just squeeze like this. You just want it on the teeth. There we go, a little bit. Good girl. What is it you want? There's something in there. Are you good at this? She does pretty good on Penny. The other goats that we have are not as standstillish for the hand milking. But Angel's a great help with the milking. So I've never had goat's milk before. This is, this is interesting. It doesn't smell any different. That's not bad. And yeah, it's ice. There's yes. ice chunks in there. Yeah, got too cold. Huh. So this has a higher buttermilk, butterfat content. Okay. It's good. So my day here at Almost a Farm has come to the end, and uh, I have been spoiled. So I have goat's milk ice cream. I got to try my first glass of goat's milk, which actually isn't too bad. It's a little bit sweeter. Uh, and then I have an apple rhubarb pie here, or a piece of one, and it, it's phenomenal. Uh, I got to buy some bread. I bought Susanna somewhere. I bought Susanna some goat milk soap. But they do a lot more here, and they offer classes on how to do most of it. Uh, they also offer educational opportunities for local school children, which is phenomenal. Uh, so just a, a really cool place hidden back here in Cove, Oregon. So whether you're a Harvest Host person or not, or, or member, I would look them up. Uh, they do have an Airbnb room as well, but definitely plan ahead. If you just show up, you're going to miss out on some of these opportunities that they have. So I would recommend emailing them, which through Harvest Host, that's how they prefer to be contacted. Email them a week or two ahead of time. Say, hey, this is when I'm coming in and this is the time I'll be there and ask them, what opportunities do you have? Maybe you'll get to go milk a goat. I'm not good at it. I know that and I'll admit it. Um, but it is, it's fun to learn. It's fun to see um, how they live their life and uh, to meet people that are so passionate about doing something different. And I think that's, that's one cool thing with Harvest House in general is the people that own these locations, they're passionate about what they're doing. They're passionate about what they make and they want to share that with people. So if you are an RVer with Harvest Hosts, the membership is cheap, the experiences are unique, and uh, maybe, maybe you'll get the chance to try some goat's milk ice cream, which is awesome. Mmm.